What's going on Port fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're going to review Port Adelaide's Round 1 clash against the Melbourne Demons that happened last Saturday at the MCG. What a fantastic victory by the boys away from home. And it's just a great start for the year. So without further ado, let's just get straight into this game and have a look and see what went right for Port Adelaide. Modlock starting to have an impact. Sits it up long. Robbie Gray might stay down. Marshall goes up, makes a contest. Gray did stay down. Ryder went and got it. Hands it up. Outside of the boot. Dersma! All the young kids are firing. All right, let's just get straight into it. Some of the key points I learned from the weekend. It was a very scrappy first start. Uh, first quarter, sorry, for the game, um, particularly Port's defence was a little bit nervous, um, a little bit on the edge, especially with the likes of Jonas. Um, some of the key pillars down there, Cleary as well, Jack Watts, just finding his feet a little bit down there. They were all a bit clumsy. Uh, Darcy Byrne-Jones was another one, had a uh, pretty poor start to the game. Um, but you know what, they started to ease into it very well, and um, by the second quarter, everyone was just ticking along nicely. Um but that, yeah, that first quarter was a real real bit of a worry with Melbourne getting three goals up uh, in quick succession. But a steadier from the skipper and uh, the ex-skipper and Travis Boak um, certainly helped us just get back into the game a little bit. We didn't hit our targets as well. Um, and we're just a little bit too handball um, friendly. We're just trying to get in there a bit more and just everyone getting a touch around the footy. And by the end of the game, that definitely filtered out. Uh, we were a little bit more direct. We went, um, you know, switching the play. We went along the wings a little bit quicker. Uh, we, we, yeah, we just hit more targets and we're a little bit more patient with the footy, which was uh, very nice to see. Um, just in general, though, what a great start to the year. What a win. Oh, it feels good to start the year. Underdogs going into the game. And, yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon to be there with the crowd. Um, who, by the way, were absolutely phenomenal all day, was sensational. And a credit to the Port fans. There was only a small amount, probably two or 3,000, maybe even a bit more, but they were loud. Oh, were they loud down there at the pon in the Ponsford stand? They were just, yeah, it was just amazing to be a part of. And it really created an atmosphere like home, basically, um, being a part of the Port fans, being very passionate and um, cheering our boys on to what ended up being an Phenomenal victory. One that I'm very proud I went over to win us and one that I think we'll be remembering for a long, long time in the near future. Um, look, Rockcliffe and Boak can football. Simple as that. Um, you know, I think it was 78, 79 touches between them. Um, they were just everywhere in the midfield. They ran loose. They dominated Oliver and Brayshaw in the middle all day. They were definitely in, um, you know, great form and they... They were hitting, well, both hit the scoreboard. Rockcliffe was definitely setting up a lot of the plays. He was helping out in defense as well. He took 10 marks for the day, which for a midfielder is phenomenal. And if you're a fantasy player, the pig was back. 166 fantasy points. I've got Boak in my team. He got 144. And I'm pleasantly happy that I've picked up my man in my team. Um, but they definitely, yeah, proved to a lot of the, you know, a lot, to the coaches especially, that's where you got to play them. That's where Boak and Rockliffe have got to be the whole time, unless they're helping out in the middle, uh, in the back line, sorry, or down forward, or just having a rest on the bench. That's their prime position. And I wouldn't be unsettling that because Boak knows what he's doing. Rockliffe knows what he's doing. And that's just a sensational combination, a duo that I reckon in the near future for sure uh, will work very effectively. One key person I wanted to speak about, first of all, is Jack Watts. Um, we all saw his after match press uh, his interview uh, with Cam Mooney. It was a very emotional one, and I think a lot of credit has to go to Jack Watts. He held his head high all day. He fought off the negative um, feedback from the fans, that a lot of the booing that is happening. He was aggressive with his old teammates, and I think that's what encouraged a lot of booing. Um, but essentially, you know, um, that would, he was just yeah f phenomenal down back. He was effective with the ball. Twenty, I think, twenty three, twenty four touches he had for the day. Um, he was taking marks. He was taking the game on as well. And we all know he's got a beautiful kick of the footy. It's just a matter of him getting his hands in it, uh, his hands on it, and just really going and really using it effectively, which um, he did, and he did really well. And I think a lot of Melbourne fans would have been sitting there that day uh, yesterday. And thinking, like, well, 
credit to him. I think he deserves that. So bravo to Jack Watts. A uh, little thing on Melbourne. This is obviously a more Port Adelaide dominated review, but Melbourne, I think, were a bit sloppy coming into uh, the JLT series. You know, their form didn't really show. I didn't, they didn't think they showed their full hand through there, and I was a little bit sceptical coming into this week, thinking, all right, they're going to go 100% now. We're not going to have half a chance, not even a look at it. Um, and I think their JLT form sort of came in to round one. Obviously, everything that's happened this weekend, footy-wise, has been bizarre. Results... Tipping, everything is just out of the book. It's been a shocking week for tipping. But nonetheless, Melbourne were just, yeah, they were a little bit off, I think, yesterday. And um, they'll come good, definitely. I still rate Melbourne. And you know what? It's it's only round one. You've got 21 other games to look at. So I wouldn't be too worried if you're a Melbourne fan. Um, just got to be, if you're a Port fan, a little bit happier because that was a pleasant surprise. Uh, just quickly, how about those kids? <laughs> to put it simply, Xavier Dersma. Connor Rosie and Zach Butters, well, weren't they something special? Honestly, watching them live, they rejuvenated this team. They were exceptional. Their energy on the field brought the best out of players like Boak, Robbie Gray. You could see the smiles on their faces when they're running around, enjoying their first game of AFL footy, let alone on the MCG. They were just dominating. That second quarter, Dersma kicks a goal. Outside of the foot, Banana goes through. Butters, on the run, gets a handball from Dersma, puts it through for his first goal on AFL footy, and then backs it up with a tap over the back and a snap on goal. Oh, my God. Calm down. Crowd went nuts. Uh, a little Another note as well. Our defense was exceptional. Uh, a little credit to um, Ryan Burton. He was amazing yesterday. His kicking ability out the back half is, oh, his skill's phenomenal. Under pressure as well, he took the game on, um, and he got a, he got down to the fourth half and kicked a couple of behinds. I reckon he could have kicked a couple of goals uh, as well, and that's something that we def we need. You know, when Hartler comes back in, having Houston, Hartler, and Burton across that half back line helping out each other and setting up the play. Oh, gee, oh, I can't even think about. It. I get too excited. Just before we get to the votes, I just want to uh, an another mention for the Hoff. Simply to put it, he's an aging. He's an aging legend, to be honest. He's like a fine wine, just beautiful every time he goes out and plays. Another five goals for the legend of Port Adelaide. He plays his 250th next week, and he's going to be in fine form. I really think he could play on forever. He's the next Dustin Fletcher, Justin Westhoff, and I'm really glad that he's continuing on his fine form from being a um, best and fairest in 2018. We did it for Robbie Gray. Didn't have the best of days, Robbie. He was uh, definitely... His skill level was a bit off, but he did kick a goal. He did celebrate with his family, and I think at the end of the day, that's all he wanted. He wanted a win in his 200th, and to celebrate it with all his friends, his family, um, and his teammates, you know, you can't say it any better than that. And I think well done to Robbie Gray. His career's been phenomenal. He's not going to stop anytime soon, and yeah, what a hell of a day for Port Adelaide and for Robbie Gray in his 200th. A fantastic way to finish off uh, what was has been a pretty nervous week, let me tell you. The build-up to the game and travelling over was, yeah, yeah. I'm just very glad the boys got across the line against a quality opposition like Melbourne. All right, time for the votes for this week's game. Round one, the Pearlo. That's what I'm calling it now. Um, one vote goes to Travis Boak. Look, to be honest, there was a couple of others that possibly could have gotten the first vote of the game, but we all know that I love Travis Boak, so he gets one vote. That's my argument. Two votes goes to the pig, Tom Rockcliffe, 44 disposals. Was very efficient across the ground. I think he had like 75% efficiency with 44 disposals. That is, that's remarkable. Um, usually you lose your efficiency after every single touch because simply having so many. But he just kept his worth um, and just did it effectively. So good on Tommy Rockcliffe. And three votes goes to the grandfather of Port Adelaide, Justin Westhoff. Five goals, 23 touches for the day. Um, he was just phenomenal across the ground, took fantastic marks in the forward half, helped out in the back half, set up the play in the middle. He was just everywhere again. Um, and with this new 6-6-6 rule, he could definitely be very effective down forward. And I really look forward to seeing what he brings to the side this year. Um, we know what he can do. It's what he's about to do that um, gets me quite nervous because 
Yeah, he could be... Oh, he could kick 45, 50 goals this year if he plays that type of form every day. Every day of the week, he'll kick 45, 50, and the beard will just keep going and look even better. But yeah, they're the votes for round one after a fantastic victory for Port Adelaide at the MCG. Thank you very much for watching, Port fans. It was a hell of a week. It was a hell of a day at the MCG. I did catch up with uh, Caden McDonald and Austin Cooks, and aren't they a bunch of legends? Uh, they'll be a part of the vlog, which will come out, uh, I think, in the next day or two, so... Make sure you check that out. Port Adelaide were champions on the day at the MCG. So let me know what you think of the game in the comments below. Who was your favourite player on the day and who impressed you the most? My name's Anthony Port fans. Thanks for watching once again. And as always, Kamapair.